Hello and welcome to another episode of my Productivity Mastery Series. My name is Carl Pauline and today we're looking at the task that you never do and you keep kicking down the road hoping one day miraculously it will get done, which obviously it never does until you actually start to do it. Now these tasks are things like do presentation file for next week's meeting. Something like that. Complete presentation for next week's meeting. Now a task like this seems fairly straightforward. There's an action, do, and there's quite clear what you need to do, like create a presentation file. So why do you never do it? Why do you keep postponing it, rescheduling it, and pushing it down the list? Now I'm taking a presentation task as an example, but there are numerous ones. It's like uh, do marketing campaign for next month, things like that. Now, there's a reason why you resist doing it. There's a reason why we keep scheduling it, rescheduling it, pushing it down the list. And that is because every time your brain sees a task like that, it's going to go, no way, I have no time to do that today. Now, this is largely because our brain is not very good at anticipating how something, how long something will take. It just works on the negative rather than the positive. So, there's a quick technique that you can use here which will simplify this and also prevent you from rescheduling the task all the time. So, let's take the presentation file. You know, develop presentation for next week. Now, it's good that we have a verb develop, but it's too big. So what we need to do is to break it down. Now, I have a technique that I use called begin, continue, finish. I think you could be start, continue, finish. It doesn't really matter how you use that first one, begin or start. So let's say that you've got this work on presentation file. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the verb. We're going to change it to start work on presentation for next week's meeting. That's what we're going to call it. Start work on presentation for next week's meeting. After that, we can now decide, well, all I need to do really is just open up the presentation file. Let's get a couple of slides done and then I've started the task. Now, of course, you haven't completed the task at this point, but all you now need to do is change the verb from start to continue and then reschedule it. So I'm going to change this to continue work on presentation for next week and I'm just going to give it a date for tomorrow. Now the great thing about this is I've started the task. My brain has been fooled if you like. I have spent maybe 10 minutes preparing the first couple of slides so it just gets me going and now when I continue working on this task tomorrow all I have to do is continue where I left off the presentation file is started, it's open up Keynote in my case, and I can now continue creating the slides. Now, when I get to closer to the finish of this, when I know there's only a couple of slides to do, a quick run through, I change the verb then to finish presentation file for next week's meeting. Now, I like the word finish because it tells me there's probably around about one hour left to do, and it gives me an end to this task. So what I've basically done is I've created a task like work on or build presentation file for next week's meeting. But rather than letting my brain take control and tell me I don't have time today, I can just say, well, I've only got 10 minutes, so let's get this file started. Or tomorrow it may be I've only got 30 minutes spare to do this, so I'm just going to open up the file and just continue working on it. Essentially what you're doing is you're fooling your brain. So it's just basically using start, continue and finish and those are the verbs that you use to get these tasks complete. Now I can assure you that if you follow this with any of those tasks that you are really struggling with, find motivation to start or do, you're going to start moving them forward. You're not going to be rescheduling them down the road until the night before the meeting when you have to do the presentation and you spend all evening panicking and putting together your presentation file. That's not a smart way of working. It's better to do it bit by bit by bit over the course of say four or five days you will feel so much better. So I hope this tip has helped you. It's helped me a lot over the years. I've never really thought about it in a way of why 
people struggle and it just came up with a couple of my coaching calls over the last couple of weeks where people have been kicking a task further and further down the road when really all you need to do is change the verb of the task and it becomes a lot more doable and a lot less overwhelming. Well, thank you so much for watching this video and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.